Oh, welcome everybody. We're here uh, bringing you some Invite Highlander here in the RGL season 19, week number two. Uh, in our six team invite season this season, we have Locked In Syndrome playing against Daniel Team on the one, the only cough product. I am not the one and not the only rogue. There are very many of us, but I happen to be one. Uh, and I'm also joined by my side by probably the one and probably the only TC Mana. How are you doing? Good to see you. I am doing very, very well. I I think I might be the one and only. I got lucky with my Discord name change. You know, I was one of the first ones, so I don't know. There might be another one out there. But regardless, I am very excited to see some nice Highlander action tonight. Like you said, on Koth Product, a uh, much beloved map, I think everyone in the TF2 competitive community. You know, everyone has got their fair share of experiences playing on it and uh, kind of a staple, I think, when you look at both Sixes and Highlander. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how these two teams stack up tonight. Um, and I, I do want to get your early thoughts on it, Rogue, because, you know, uh, compared to me, you know a lot more about Highlander, uh, you know, casting it every week with Alto as well. So I want to get your thoughts on this matchup. Who do you think is going to be a... Uh, are maybe our potential winners here tonight locked in syndrome they're already down uh one uh because they lost a team fun earlier and then on the other side team daniel or i got that the wrong, wrong way around daniel team is already going to be up one due to their win over the imposters last week so kind of a uh, not sitting at the same record but do you think that has any implication on how this match is going to go tonight uh, you know what? In fact, I do. Thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, this uh, this Daniel team is, uh, you know, everyone has a lot of fun changing the team names around. Branding be damned. Uh, but <laughs> this is the fabled, the famed Witness Gaming team from seasons past where there was a whole documentary. If anyone happened to catch that on their, their win over uh, Team Fun, who were the dominant force for so many years here in RGL Invite Highlander. Uh, but basically, yeah, Daniel team are, are the, the team to beat here. Uh, they're very much the favorites. Um, but locked in syndrome number one has some very strong individual players and number two this is a map at least everyone is very comfortable on so we'll see how far that can take them but i i would so far predict probably four zero in in favor of daniel team but you never know Ooh, all right well let's see if maybe locked in syndrome like you said has something up their sleeve uh looking at the rosters like you said, it does seem like uh, there's kind of a lot of a uh, maybe, you know, Daniel team is a much stronger combination, but there's still some heavy hitters over on the side of locked in syndrome. I know just from Six's experience that Darty is a top uh, Six's scout. You've also got a, um, I think, Exa, you know, who's been around the block a couple of times, Kira as well. So, you know, a lot of names that, like you said, might be able to contest at least individually. But, you know, on the side of Daniel team, you got Foxy, who is now making their debut, actually, in Six's uh, invite. So it's really cool to see. But I know she's already been kind of a mainstay in Invite Highlander already on that medic class. And then Mujet or Muhet. How do you say that? Mujet? Yeah, we should say Mujet, but it's uh, Mujet. Okay. Brazilian. So w good luck there. <laughs> no worries. I see the ping is already above 100. You love to see that. But I know a very, very uh, scary sniper to face off against. And I guess uh, when you look at the analysis of this map, Rogue, what would you say are kind of, if you were lost in translation, what is that one player that you'd want to just pop off to give your team some type of shot in this match? Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is a cool question. You know, here on product like, Mm, this is like the the home map of of highlander here and like players have been born on this map all of us will die on this map and spend <laughs> the middle time on this map um so you know there are a lot of players playing pickup games even outside of of um the scrimmages and everything like that all the matches all that so these players are very well versed on the map i'm gonna look to a player like lucky um because i think lucky is very sharp and able to find picks against a better team which is very rare for a spy but more than that i think you have to orchestrate pushes right like you're not going to like you're not going to win on dm alone you're not going to win on good plays alone i think it's going to be from lucky kind of opening those opportunities whether it's collapsing on the right pick at the right time or getting that crucial stab for the med drop i, I actually don't see them winning unless lucky goes nuts here Ooh, interesting so Lucky is kind of your player to watch, at least for Lost in a uh, Lost in Translation, and you know I can definitely understand that. When it comes down to, I depending on how much you know about these teams, who is kind of like the main 
the main caller for Lost in Translation? Because I know sometimes you can it can be the spy. You know, they can be sneaking around giving info for the teams. And uh, do you do you know if that is lucky? Are they kind of the guy to get everyone in motion, be that master planner that the spy can sometimes be? Or do you think it's going to be someone else in Lost in Translation? Maybe Kira, the demo man, or maybe their heavy weapons guy who's going to be organizing everyone and kind of trying to get everyone coordinated to make some... Uh, maybe superior team moves if, like you said, they can't rely on DM versus uh, Team Daniel. Uh, yeah, you know what? I, I would say, so uh, Kira is the main caller on their team. Uh, and I think I'd played with Kira, if I'm remembering right, in Kira's debut invite season, which was one, probably one year ago to the day almost, uh, like, you know, like late September maybe of last year. And um, he showed that he's like one of those callers that like, keeps the mic held down the entire game, which is really important because it's someone who doesn't like stop calling when things don't go well. However, um, I don't know. I think it's one of those things too that like to, I guess I'm curious to see basically how well Kira's calls have been rounded out as the years go by because Kira's calls are always good, but you know, to win a match like this, I think they have to be fantastic. Ooh, we'll, we'll hopefully see if it is fantastic. Like you said, they got a, a pretty strong competition in Daniel team, I just a lot of the names on there. I didn't even mention Exile, Pablo, uh, people who have had a lot of experience. Melon, I know, is someone who's kind of been around the block on that Pyro class. And I think maybe Engineer as well. I might be misremembering that, but I know they're definitely kind of at this point an invite mainstay. So a lot of a, uh, the best of the best on this X Witness Gaming roster, as you mentioned. It's funny you said that, and I realized I narrated. <laughs> that a uh, thing I completely just blanked because I didn't recognize the team name. But uh, no, definitely these guys have a lot of experience competing at the top levels. Definitely check that out if you haven't. But I think we are going to go live here. You said 4 0. Uh, get your predictions in chat if you haven't already, guys. But are you going to make any, uh, any you know, changes to that or you think it's going to be a 4 0 game? Yeah, I'm feeling good. We'll see how uh, explosive this first mid is and see if they can run with it. But yeah, here we go. Week number two here on Cough Product. Cough Product and going to be watching the rollouts. A uh, Exile getting there a little bit early. Just going to be able to hit some stickies across, but immediately gets taken down by Mountain with a quick headshot to open things up. So that is going to be the demo down for Team Daniel. Seems like uh, Lost in Translation wants to get aggressive across the point. Going to be having to deal with Lucky in the back lines, getting a couple backstabs as well. And they're getting some good point presence as well. So not a good opening for Team Daniel. What you need, however, if you are Lost in Translation. A uh, blank there had a buff in the boost fight a minute. Wait a second, Ray getting caught out. Even Melon's flare cleaning up the damage. Now Mujek going for another pick and another pick onto Cham and Exa. Uh, here are the only one contesting point here, but it's basically a 2v6 right now for this point. Uh, they died so fast on the side of um, Daniel team that uh, they respawned kind of all together as a group. Yeah, they didn't. They were able to take the point because of it. Now it's going to be a question of how long can they hold it? They got all of their uh, setup ready. The engineers got all the classes, but that doesn't stop Mountain from getting an opening headshot on to Melon. And it's going to be an opportunity for Lost in Translation to try and go forward, but the Uber is going to come out instead from Daniel. He just collapses on everybody. They all get mulched one by one. No one is going to be able to survive. It seems like last one, JRY gets headshot or body shot out of the sky. Mini Sentry, last one, the fall and uh, maybe they forgot about the uber maybe they thought that team daniel wasn't going to be that aggressive with it but they all got collapsed upon that's right um yeah and beautiful play out of daniel team and well actually some like kind of early picks playing so far forward foxy rotating with exile here like from door to door probably going down on cliffside means that the team now is going to back up uh but still holding this forward angle but this is where we see actually some nice picks coming out but ray going down in the back lines is uh something you never want to see no, you don't want to see it. Try and scramble, think what to do. They can maybe go for a sack with Lucky. It is in the back lines. Try to go for something, does find Exile. So that is going to be a demo down. Maybe not the medic that he's necessarily looking for, but at least it gives his team some space to play with JR Way, making some chaos over by Connector. Their heavy does go down, and once again, the Uber might catch Ray, does catch Ray. And this is going to be the second time running that uh, Lost in Translation, not keeping track of those Uber charges from Team Daniel. Yeah, I feel like you kind of get stuck sometimes on this map. It's like, 
okay, if we know we have this ad, then we shouldn't push yet. But if we never push, then we never win the round. So I, I do, I'm grateful that they're trying, but also like you said, it's like, well, now we have no Uber for almost the entire round straight, huh? They just don't have the Uber. They're gonna have to try and do something in it to get it away. And Ray being taken down by Mujet is not how you do that. Once again, seems like Team Dano just walking across the point, killing everyone in their sights. They are gonna be backing up now. You know, you don't want to overextend, but they're still pretty far forward. Still very, very aggressive. Lucky, the only one from his team, kind of now in the back line, just trying to see if he can maybe get some information. And Mujet is just raining shot after shot off. Making the way out here, shot away, calling this out. Hero working, uh, you know, peeking into the sight line first. Survives the shot from Jet so far. Uh, we'll give it a couple more milliseconds and we'll see if that connected from the ping. But there we go, Pablo flying in on the high ground. Exile flying in, honestly going to use the Uber. Uh, shot away, not behind Ray this time. Or tried to go for Ray, was not able to seal the deal. So the, the ad push gets enough players, but not the medic this time. Not the medic, so it will at least be even Ubers for, I think, uh, actually it's going to be advantage for Lost in Translation for one of the first times in this game, actually. They have to go quick. There's only five seconds left, so they can't even wait for the Uber. I don't know if anyone's in position to make a break for the point. They're not. And that is going to be the first round in the favor of Team Daniel. Yeah, very short play. I mean, blank on scout is almost unstoppable on this point. I mean, you don't see him here at the top of the scoreboard. That would be legit. But uh, Blank, like, 1v4 for so long after the mid-fight and managed to seal the deal, keep the team locked out the entire time. You just can't move if Blank is on your side of the server. You can now. You have to try and figure out some answer. Pablo goes down early. Same thing to Kira, getting a headshot from across the point. So good opening from Mujet there as a, uh, the rest of his team just going to be walking for a nice little medic go from Ray to take down Honesty, but it seems like it's a nice scrap for the point. A little bit better, however, for Team Daniel, especially with Dotwit going down there a bit later in the fight, and it seems like Ray should be able to stay alive, so not necessarily as bad as the position as they were in previously. It is going to be even Ubers, but once again, not having a good opening at the start of this round. And working out this time on the grass half of the point, JRY going and turning a bunch of heads, make, buying all that space. Kira flying forward, but Melon saying, like, go ahead, keep walking. Uh, and Melon shoves back so, so, so many of these players. Like, Foxy has had not a not a care in the world here. Uh, thanks to Melon holding back basically five in the store for such a long time. Just doing the job and Lucky trying to get into the position, but the Uber is going to be exchanged over on this grass area, looking maybe a little bit better for them as they're trying to go forward. Lucky uh, doesn't have any luck on his side as he gets taken down, and Ray is going to go down to the pistol shot from Shotaway. Nice one there right before he dies, and uh, once again, even though it seems like Lost in Translation had maybe an opportunity there with the Uber exchange, the post much more favoring Team Daniels is just cleaning up the remaining stragglers. Brilliant play so far. Yep, they got a solid ad here on the side of Team Daniel, uh, about 40%. Uh, you can see here they're like sometimes playing more committal, sometimes playing less. I think these switch ups keep you in the game so, so much because every time the opposing team tries to counter your play, you hit them with a new look, you know what I mean? Hit him with a new look, change cosmetic set. Someone going in so deep <laughs> is gonna be Pablo. Gets annihilated, and honestly, picking up a fair few there with the pyro in Melon. So, a Team Daniel finding some kills over by Cliff once again gets onto Ray. And lost in translation, nothing seems to be working, nothing seems to be sticking. It's like you said, they can't even get to even Ubers because at that point, Foxy just lets it loose and everyone on Team Daniel just aggress forward and get all the kills. Right, this is a somewhat of a push here, but you know, Ray still has this this ad. So if you're Foxy, you're exile, you're blank, you want to let them get as close as possible and then eat them alive. Uh, shot away now in position, calling out the, the enemy positions here. Blank flying forward, shot away, he close, but not able to actually close the gap. They use most of the Uber on uh, Dot White here, the heavy. Uh, and now, wait a second, still flying forward. Uh, Melon got Hira, and this dead jump again to spawn does yeah, some damage to Ray, but Ray survives on 75. Ray barely surviving. I don't know what I was saying. I think I was saying lost in translation. No, it's locked in syndrome. Um, as they have to try and break out of this syndrome of being perpetually sent back to the respawn room. Fortunately for Kira, not gonna quite happen. Gets taken down with a nice headshot from Mujet. As now the Uber is finally gonna be used from them. They're going so deep. Nice bomb from Jury. Finds a couple. They 
could be their first opportunity to get some time on the round clock, but I don't know if they're going to have enough forces to try and cap it up. Shot away, tries to go for a stab onto Ray, is going to miss it. Ray defending themselves, but they're not going to be able to defend themselves with a bomb from Pablo, and that might spell the end for this round, and it does. That's going to be the second round in a row for Daniel Team. There we go, so far at 2-0, and for anyone at home just joining us here on Invite Highlander, first of all, welcome. Second of all, uh, it's first of four rounds wins here on King of the Hill, so basically if Daniel, uh, Team Daniel here, is able to win two more rounds, then they take it home uh, for week number two here in the main season. Yeah, you know, I am, I'm used to first of four, but in sixes we don't have this halftime, so it's actually great to see it back. Gives a little bit of time to look over things but i mean just from what we've seen right now rogue it, it's like you said team daniel or daniel team sorry have a uh, a much stronger just a knowledge of when to when to go in when to be aggressive and you know their aggressive is you know their aggressiveness isn't being punished sometimes when teams take aggressive ubers like that um it can backfire like you're not able to get the target that they want but it seems like almost every time that they use one of these ubers in they're able to get in onto ray and foxy is not being punished for it at all i don't know if you're looking at the stats but foxy no deaths which is incredibly impressive on product regardless of whatever uh format you're playing whether it be sixes or highland you got so many people trying to get at you so foxy playing an amazing game and team daniel as well uh just for protecting her and you know making sure that there's no real threats that's right i i forget how long ago now but i had worked with foxy like as a mentor years ago and you know i'll I mentor all the time and so often you or not so often so rarely you see someone where it's like oh wait a second they're showing near mastery on the class they're just playing in a division that's too low and so with working with foxy i was exactly that like ah yes this person will be very high invite as soon as they want to uh so yeah i'm really happy to see foxy like kind of getting the position they deserve right uh here on on um team daniel and um yeah i mean the stats kind of speak for themselves like pushing into mujet like this going 18 and 3 um you know it is kind of like loaded because you know the medic gets to sit and full tank your sniper because you're not taking much damage elsewhere. So, um, you know, this whole team's kind of working together to lock down these doorways, keep the medic alive. Um, yeah, I love what I'm seeing out of Team Daniel so far. Yeah, Team Daniel just they, uh, making product their new house for the moment. They have got everything locked down, moving in. And for locked in syndrome, they're just trying to get out of the basement, uh, which seems to be their side of the map. They've not found a lot of success. Um, you know, they had a... A good opening mid, but they didn't even win that. And uh, Team Daniel were able to take it back in the post fight, uh, kind of after the initial scrap. So, I mean, for Team Daniel, or sorry, for Locked In Syndrome, what do you think is the name of the game? Do you think they have to be a little bit more aggressive uh, in these kind of a uh, before either team has Uber? You know, there's a lot of times that they have Uber disad. Team Daniel has Uber advantage, but. You know, locked in syndrome doesn't want to really do anything because they're waiting for their Uber. Do you think they should be more willing to just, you know, eight man sack? Or I guess seven man sack would be the correct term in and try and get on the Foxy to nullify that? Or do you think it comes down to maybe playing the picks on the flanks and try to open things up like that? Yeah, it's a very good question. And I would say, first and foremost, it's very tough, I think, to like kind of structure your, like, whatever kind of play you're looking for, you hope you even get to start it right. Um, but I do think. Let me see. You know, the heartbreaking thing, especially on cough like this, is when a team is too passive and doesn't push enough. Um, I do think that locked in syndrome is pushing enough, right? We saw them push actually on disad. That's a kind of the difference maker. Like if you see a team push knowing they have disad, they're at least playing to win and trying to go for those openings, even if it's not the best, like starting off on the right foot. I would say maybe spend a lot of time here on halftime on your mids, uh, because the mids were at least not very one-sided they were actually pretty even and maybe only at the last second did they end up losing it so if you can basically convert a mid suddenly you know they now have to uber into you to get the point back so i, I would say your mid fights are what you're looking for if you're locked in syndrome well hopefully locked in syndrome can hear your words of advice i know you mentored foxy but they might need a little bit of your mentoring right now to get back <laughs> into this game currently 2-0 in the favor of daniel team said it correctly that time <laughs> wild name actually it trips you up so much at least it does for me but 
if you're uh, looking at this and you're like, you know, this is cool, but I want to show my appreciation of Highlander, not just by watching it, but wearing, wearing it. Well, we have got some amazing merchandise that you guys can check out. I think there's some Highlander teams that collaborated with RGL. I think some Sixes teams as well. So check that out. You can support your favorite guys or just, you know, support the, you know, TF2 in general with some amazing merch. They got some seasonal design. So if you find any that you like, make sure that you grab it because it might not be there come winter or spring. And I'm not sure when it's going to go. But it will go. I have made that mistake many times. There was a sunshine shirt that was beautiful. I didn't pick it up and it's gone now. So if you see something that you like, do buy it because it's not going to be around too much longer. Absolutely. And yeah, I love the quality of these shirts. I mean, how many years since I got my first one still kicking and also um, on the on the fourth wall, we also are now offering or what's the opposite now receiving uh memberships here for rgl so you know this league is basically run and operated by the players and you know a couple investors and things like that but what you see here as the graphic on screen you can now sort of subscribe to rgl and directly support the league so this includes uh supporting these prize pools and you know kind of upping the ante bringing back bigger and bigger names or bringing in better and better players as uh coming up the ranks to fight for the top dollar other things like you can see different types of support where you'll be included in things like the YouTube and all over different RGL type content. Uh, so yeah, there's a bunch of different tiers here for you. And we're very grateful for everyone who makes this league possible. You know, it's all thanks to us here playing, us here watching. So yeah, we're happy to, to be all a part of a team here. We are indeed happy to be all a part of a team. It's really great. Um, and you know, if you can help support, it's super cool. Also helps fund a, uh, you know, lands and stuff i think so uh you know it's really just great for the tf2 community in general but uh, someone maybe not thinking about that is going to be locked in syndrome as they got to figure out some way to claw out of this 2-0 deficit it is first of four like rogue said earlier so they've got you know one more round to really afford to lose before they have to turn up the heat but it's um, become slowly becoming or actually quickly becoming do or die for them and you know first two rounds it was mostly die hopefully from now on it can be do uh yeah that's correct and um our our chat here our steam chat is on good behavior right now but um if you'll allow me to go off for a second i i, I know what you're thinking chat everyone is here thinking wow Wow, I'm a stupid little baby and this match isn't very close. Um, I think I think it's very important to show matches like this uh, because number one, this solidifies like how much better Daniel team is. And number two, for um, locked in syndrome, what does it look like when your back is against the wall? What do you have in your arsenal to come back in the game? These are huge in terms of how the rest of the season is gonna play out. So I'm really happy that we're seeing even like a blowout like this. Like what do they have to show us here as we go into half number two? Exactly, and we'll have to see what Locked In Syndrome have to show us. Well, first it has to be taking down Pablo as they bomb in to Ray. Does a lot of damage. Ray gonna be able to survive that one, but is so, so weak. Might get pistol down by Shadowway as he's on the cliff side. I don't know if they can X, but Ray is gonna go down to a fight from Exile. That is not how they want to start that Foxy all the way back by their side of cliff. So should be able to survive Nell with a nice click kill onto JRY. It's looking pretty scrappy, and even though they are gonna have Uber advantage, I don't know if Daniel team have enough players just to cap the point so I think for the first time this could be a mid one by locked in uh locked in syndrome it, to be honest I was ready for blank to continue to one before for that post fight at mid but hey uh blank got kind of caught out a little bit greedy maybe getting too comfortable here so great play out of locked in syndrome now we got a mid under our belt 10% ad for Ray. It's time to play against these sacks and Pablo going in first and not able to get too deep quite yet, but going back in and back out. And they always keep them guessing. Always keep them guessing the best way to be. Locked in syndrome, however, gonna be losing 3-1 from Exile. Lucky tries to go for the stab, does get spawned out, and is not gonna have any success there. So that is going to be Team Daniel retaking the point. And they uh, now the gonna be for the first time in this match at disadvantage time-wise. Dot went, gets it two before he goes down. You know, those are very good trades. I know uh, some people in lower divisions are like, oh, you shouldn't die before your team pushes. That's not true because um, Daniel team has the point. So Dot White respawns way faster. Even Uber's here and look, so many are down on the side of um, Daniel team that suddenly this cap is coming down, all thanks to Dot White dying so quickly. 
dot went, but the Uber is going to come out from both teams in exchange on the point. Maybe looking a little bit better for Team Daniels. They have the space, but shot away and flank are over on China. Both get taken down. And it seems like one of the first Uber exchanges going in the favor of Locked In Syndrome. And they might be able to get on the point, but the thing is, in all of this chaos, it's going to favor Team Daniel because the time is ticking down in their favor. So even if they are losing players, it's still okay for them because, you know, they're getting the better end of the deal. See, I'm, I'm just so happy to see this already. Like, you can feel how much work, basically, that Kira and the rest of the crew put in during halftime. Um, like, for them to recover this way and to even cut back for the point. Oh, wait, flying oh away. Oh, my. back and straight surf. Uh, they end up going down for it, but they're really selling out on the side of Daniel team. Uh, we, we want to play the die here, actually, if you're locked in syndrome. Do not back up. You must perish. Uh, we don't want to give the point up for free, and if we do, we want it to take as long as possible. Walking back to spawn takes as long as respawning once the cap comes down, so just die, but instead they take the scenic route. Yeah, they do take the scenic route. I mean, you know, it's a very well, very beautiful map, but like you said, uh, a little bit better to just die, and hopefully you can get a trade out on your way there. But, uh, you know, for Locked In Syndrome there, kind of being in a, a situation that they've been in a lot of times in the course of this match. They're going to be at uber disadvantage, so they have to try and aggress, but make sure that they don't get caught out. Instead, they're going to be bombing in, and Kira takes down Foxy with some amazing well-placed stickies, and that is exactly what Locked In Syndrome needs. You like to see that type of aggression, and this time Ray is going to be very well and safe being protected by Darty and the Pyro of Sham. And uh, just going to be able to build up that Uber. And now they're going to be in a position to go and use their own Uber advantage. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Pablo and Shadow are all in the enemy house. They're still revved up. It's on the... Oh, yeah, they got found out. They got cleaned out. Uh, but wait, Mountain all alone now into Shadow and Pablo. Uh, Pablo looks like he's going down for it. No, actually survives on like 3 HP finally down. Shadow Wave already hurt as well. Ray on massive advantage here. We're going to look to take this cross point. Keep your scouting demo safe. Here we go. Flying, catching Kira. Uh, Nellen knocking the Uber back. But wait a second. Lucky goes too far. Foxy was behind the spy, which is the opposite of how that class is supposed to work. Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, sometimes you can get, you know, a face stab. I don't know how it works, but uh, not that one time. Shadow is still over in house, just trying to survive on very minimal HP. But even with that Uber, locked in syndrome, but didn't get control of the point. So I don't know how worth it it really was. It is. They did get Foxy, actually, who does it go down. So they might have another opportunity as long as they're able to keep Ray alive. Super duper weak over by Yard is going to have to get the pack in. This is going to be one of the last opportunities that they have to maybe get on to the point. Only 10 seconds left for Team Daniel before they take a third round. And you can see Locked In Syndrome, they want to try and get onto the point. They're aggressive for They find one onto Exile. Honesty going down as well. They have to step onto the point. They are going to do so, and they should be able to get this cap up, but it is going to be overtime for Team Daniel. 95%, yeah, like I mentioned, there's a, what, about a minute 45 on the clock to run all the way down where you cannot give up the point once, at least in order to seal this round. You currently score 2-0 to zero in favor of Daniel. Team. Honestly, flying forward, the Uber comes out, uh, making our way all the way across the point here. A good old-fashioned scout demo Uber, but wait a second, we lost track of Guardian, goes down for it. Guardian does go down. They are getting a few picks, however, on Locked In Syndrome to make up for it. So that is pretty good for them and uh, a pretty good opening start to their hold. Like you said, they do need to keep onto it for quite a bit, at least a minute more. And then they have to wait out the inevitable. It's not really a pub push because this is definitely a lot difficult, more difficult than a pub. But you can expect Team Daniel to make at least one more, two more desperation plays for the point because they only have to cap it up once and they will have won a third round. Now they're going to be walking forward, but Flu taken down. Nice headshot there, and the Uber going to be coming out from a Team Jato. Nice reflect, actually, from Cham, just to keep everyone on the combo well away from these incoming players. Now they're going to be coming back on to the point. Can they get the kills to make it worth it? Nice stab from Lucky onto Melon. Seems like Locked In Syndrome might have been able to hold on to the point for just a little while longer. Foxy is super duper weak. He's going to have to back up over to Cliff, and I think Pablo might get caught out here, does jump away, but they do lose a lot on Locked In Syndrome. Yeah, they, they go for the Soldier Uber of all classes. Finally, flashing Dotwet up and saving Dotwet from the backstab. Uh, the big bombing from Pablo, that, yeah, that's what I'm going to take the beam off for just one second. A cap does go down for uh, Daniel team, uh, but what a great showing. Only 15 seconds left, so a very close round this time around. 
Yeah, very, very close. They did have a hard task in trying to hold on to a point, not give it up once for round about minute 30. So they got very close, and we can see that once they're into position, once they have control of the point, they can hold on to it for quite a while. They just, like you said, have to be a little bit better at these mids, which happened last time, which made it as close. Time Pablo goes in behind, does get taken down. Two nice opening picks, one onto Foxy. That's really great stuff from Lucky, the player that you called out earlier in the B game and definitely showing up for his team. Now they have to keep Ray alive, which they have done. They're gonna have Uber Danger, so even if they give up the point now, they're gonna have a great opportunity to take it back in just a few moments. Yeah, I remember this is a fun, like, thought experiment. Uh, maybe it'll ask you the same. Would you rather win mid with Disad or lose mid, but you have this full app? Ooh. That is a very, very fun thought experiment. I, I'm sure there's so many discussion posts that could be garnered from that. Uh, but currently, for Locked In Syndrome, they're just going to have to deal with the hand they've been played. And they're going to use the Uber to try and retake what could have been theirs. They find a couple, but they lose a few more on their own side. So not how they want this Uber to go. They didn't really get any space with it. Pablo now jumping in just to push them all away and a shot away. Nice backstab onto Ray. And what could have been for Locked In Zone Syndrome is definitely not what they would have wanted. Damn, Jero got a Foxy down to... 7 HP that was uh, in like the kind of collapse where when you lose your medic you must trade for theirs basically. 90% um, now on Foxy making their way forward but a very quick push basically saying like yeah we don't want to let you get set up in that forward hole so honestly blank okay they find lucky that's pretty rough but regardless they're not able to get too forward only honestly really running interference here through um, main. Yeah, honesty being a nuisance over on main, just kind of playing that high ground really well. Now he's in house, lurking, and <laughs> spotted out the entry. A nasty surprise for Exa, but Mujet gets one onto Jairway. Uh, maybe just force them back a little bit longer. They find the spy once again. They, uh, it just seems like lost in translation, especially with Ray going down. I think that was the ball from uh, the scout there. Is not going to be having a good time. The Uber coming in from Team Daniel just to get some more ground, clean up a few more of these players. Dotway as well going to go down. Darty, JRY, they're all falling one by one by one. And it just seems like a Team Daniel have such a good dominant hold on this point. We have a big difference between like the ranks of teams. Wait a second, Lucky on through Jetman's all alone. Do you remember I'm like, oh, you can just be near Sniper and that's why they can stay alive so long. And then Sniper mains will walk away anyway. Uh, so naturally <laughs> defeat from the Jaws of Victory uh, going down all alone here. But even Ubers, now there's two down, including the Sniper means you can peek every doorway. I mean, there could be traps here, but um, working our way all the way up to point without losing anyone just yet. Yeah, not losing anyone just yet, so taking the most of that opportunity are locked in translation while Mujet is not on the scene, is here back again and might start picking off a few shots, but Dotwood going to be walking for Champ onto the point, helps take down Kira, or helps take down Blank, my bad. And so that's going to be the first pick, but Mujet onto Dotwood, no heavy for locked in syndrome. They have to do it. There's only 20 seconds left, but the counter Uber is going to come out. It's going to be a pyro v pyro battle, a much better use of 14 Daniel. They use so much later there. No Ubers on the clock here, right down to 10 HP. Still does go down for it, but you have no, no option of retreat here. It's do or die time. Both soldiers trade here on um, concrete and not able to get onto the cap. So there you have it, everyone at home. That is a 4-0 in favor of Daniel T. 4-0, definitely showing up, hitting the shots, doing the damage. Really great calls, just knowing when to get aggressive, knowing when to play back. Uh, but however, you know, like you said, it was a lot better from Locked In Syndrome in that second half. They definitely took that time to work on a few things. Their mids were better, and that set them up to just have a better game overall. Because even though they lost um, both of them, at least that third one was pretty close. Like you said, only 15 seconds left on the clock. So definitely felt like once they were in a good position, they knew what to do. But when they were on the back foot, when they were on the ropes, they just kind of kept bleeding one by one and weren't able to really get an opening swing, you know, shift the momentum enough to put uh, Team Daniel in that same position. That's right. And I um, I think, like I mentioned before, you know, in a game like this where it's like, oh, it's a 4-0 and like so many rounds, it didn't cap at all. What we saw in round number three is like, 
this is a huge implication for me in terms of the rest of the season here in Invite because when you're able to, you know, squeeze water from stone, right? Um, if you're locked in syndrome and you're able to, like, create a competitive round almost out of thin air, I think that shows a lot out of their team to uh, adjust and adapt. And, of course, you know, we saw the kind of response out of um, Daniel team, sure. But I really just have to absolutely shout out um, Dot Wet of all players was to me the hero in that round uh, where they they almost sealed the deal uh, where it came down to like ten seconds left on the clock. Uh, Dot Wet had like kept pushing like I mentioned ahead of the team creating those openings, but even in the times where the sack actually worked and they managed to drop Foxy, it was because Dot Wet pushed on heavy the slowest class ahead of the sack and turned basically five players' heads over to concrete, looking at Dot Wet, while Kira and the rest of the team bombed overhead after and were able to get a really clean pick on the Medic. I mean, Dot Wet kept creating those openings by going, like, playing such heads up, proactive TF2. I, I'm really happy to see what he had to offer. 100%. I definitely agree with Dot Wet getting some very, very nice trades and, like you said, kind of drawing eyes along the rest of his team to get on to Foxy because they got on to Foxy, something they didn't do in the first half. Foxy, uh, I mean, dying four times, which, you know, not saying that's a lot. It isn't a lot, but in comparison to what they what she did in the previous half, a lot better showing from Locked In Syndrome and definitely gave their team a lot more room to play with, a lot better uh, positions to be in to try and uh, try and take a round there. So your victors it is going to be team daniel maybe the expected outcome but like you said we did see a lot of great uh innovation in that third round from locked in syndrome and you know it is only the second week so they do have time to try and adapt and maybe try and learn from things and you know for the competitors for uh team daniel maybe they can study that third round and see what uh locked in syndrome did well if they ever have to compete against team daniel on this very same map so definitely some things worth taking away from this game. That's right. Well, we saw a interesting one. There was a nail biter for a while and a little bit of a, of a sort of masterclass here from Daniel team on a lot of these rounds going for those lockout rounds of, uh, you know, win mid and then keep it for the entire clock. So well played out of them. Uh, here from RGL, we have a couple send offs where we have a wonderful set of merch. Uh, yeah, like you mentioned, TC, we have uh, some combinations with teams or what do you call it, like partnerships or yeah, working together with the teams to create merch for them. We have the very specific work from the graphic design team that is released this autumn and will not come back. So if you type exclamation merch in the in the chat here and uh, or if you go online to the merch.rgl.gg website, uh, you'll find some really great stuff over there. And uh, even if nothing else, you'll probably laugh at a couple of the designs or I think they're really cool because, well, that's what happens every time I check the new drops. Yeah, uh, it's what I, you know, I like to see it as well. It's kind of like a new, a new loot crate, except you can get exactly what you want. You know, it's probably the, the best part. So definitely check that out if you guys haven't already. Um, but I think aside from that, that's going to be it for us here at RGO. I mean, Rogue, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give super quick? Oh my god, shout out to Alto. Please don't die in a hurricane in Florida. The there's like a the hurricane's going nuts down there. So anyone calling in from Florida, first of all, please call in from somewhere other than Florida if you can. Uh second of all, yeah, we're wishing the best for all those people and yeah, shout out to all my friends on these teams. I mean, Dano team has so many accolades and they deserve even more. They played great tonight. So really impressed with all those players. So that's all mine. Have it for you. Um, you know, I will mirror your shout out. Hopefully Alto doing well everyone else who's in that position over there in florida or any state that is going to be affected by you know the the big hurricane you know definitely watch out stay safe you know tf2 is great but make sure you get to a safe location <laughs> like a uh, rogue set before you before you indulge otherwise you know shout outs to the teams for playing shout outs to dolphin for doing all the production work shout outs to you rogue always amazing to cast them nice highlander with you but I think that's going to be it for us here tonight. This was Locked In Syndrome versus Daniel Team. Daniel Team winning it 4-0 week two on product. We'll be back with some more Invite Highlander next Monday where it is going to be another amazing week of uh, fun. Um, maybe it will, will be team fun. We don't know. Uh, it's going to be upward, so that should be some, and some more classic TF2. But until then... We hope you've had a good night. 
and we'll see you next time.